All of us are habituated to purchasing products online. But have we ever wondered that what is the return ratio for online business? Life is not so simple for companies like Amazon and Flipkart. Can you imagine what is the quantum of sales return that these companies face? The real issue, all of you would be knowing that e-com companies are making losses. But do you know the real reason for these companies to make losses? It is not a marketing cost. It is not a sales promotion. It is not product pricing. It is predominantly the cost of logistics. Why? Why does it happen? What is the sales return ratio that these companies face? You will be shocked to know that the return ratio in these companies are more than 40%. Now, if the sales return is more than 40%, all of you would be wondering that how should Amazon and Flipkart account for this 40% sales return? Let us look at this. Hi, my name is Ramanujam Narayan. I'm a global gap expert. I have trained and transformed more than 1000 finance professionals across the globe in the areas of NDS, US Gap and IFRS. Now let's get back to our example. How does Amazon and Flipkart account for the sales return in their books? For this, let's go back to the school. Welcome to the school. Now presume Amazon has sold 10,000 products in the market. Now the return rate for Amazon is probably 30% in a particular year. Selling price of these products are 50 and the cost of these products are 30 which they pay to their merchants. Now they have sold 10,000 products, 30% is the return rate, 50 is the selling price, 30 is the cost price. Now the question is, the million dollar question is, how will they account for this 10,000 product sale, the cost and the respective returns. In the first while Indian Gap, there was a lot of anomaly. Some companies like say Flipkart or Amazon were accounting it based on net. For example, they, are, they were estimating the sales returns on day one and accordingly book their sales. Some companies like say Jebong, like Mintra, like uh, Flipkart again, they used to book the sales gross and they used to account for the sales return when it is actually being done, which is a wrong approach. Thanks to Indes, IFRS 15 and US Gap AC 606, there is a consistency in the approach what the new standard is trying to achieve in case of e-commerce, in case of retail, in the case of consumer goods industry, there is a standardization which has been achieved by saying that on day one, you have to estimate the sales return and accordingly book your revenue. For example, in our case, when Amazon sold 10,000 products, the first step, they will recognize a revenue of 7,000 into 50, which is the selling price because 30% is their sales return. 7,000 products will be the net products for which they will recognize their revenue because 3,000 products the customer is going to return. First step 7,000 into 50 which is 350,000 rupees as the first step where the entry would be the accounts receivable debit to revenue. Second step we have to recognize a refund liability where you will debit the revenue again and create that refund liability on day one, day one, day one. What you will do? 3,000 products into 50 rupees, which is the selling price. That is 150,000 rupees. You will debit revenue. You will credit refund liability. This is the second step. Third step. Now, what should come to your mind? If Amazon is selling to customers and if they are getting the goods in return, okay, then they will also return the goods to the merchants. Now, when they basically give the goods to the merchants again, they will have to adjust their cost of goods sold. What they will do, they will adjust that cost by recognizing a contract asset. Now when the contract asset is recognized, again it will be 3000 products into 30 rupees which is the cost. That means they will book a contract asset of 30,000 into 30 rupees which is 90,000 bucks in their books of account. So end of the day, the accounting position of Amazon and Flipkart is as follows. Contract asset will come in the balance sheet as 90,000. Contract liability will come in the balance sheet as 1,50,000 which means the commercial exposure for Amazon and Flipkart is net 60,000 on this transaction. On the PL front, they will recognize 3,50,000 as their sales and 7,000 products into 30 rupees which is 2,10,000 as their cost of goods sold. So the gross margin on this particular transaction is going to be 1,40,000 before adjustments. After adjustments, they will basically adjust the sales of 150,000 and they will adjust this cogs of 90,000 and then accordingly they will have the margins in the books. Now, again and again, you will have to think in the consumer industry, retail industry and e-com industry. One has to be very careful from day one 
in accounting for the sales returns if you are really willing to understand more and more about this particular content and if you are really interested in knowing more about the ifrs implications and the accounting implications and the indes implications on your commercial business you can subscribe to my channel finance first